this video, I just want to ask if you need guidance, then please contact me um, in setting up your Boveda. And I have a lot of blog entries about it on my blog, sensista.blogspot.com. Because um, nobody should charge you to set up your Boveda. If you have a, a godparent, then it's a culture of gifting and that is expected. So you should give them something like, you know, a bag of coffee or rice or a can, uh, Novena candle or um, a bottle of Florida water, etc. Just to show your appreciation and by supporting them, then they can support you and them getting ahead, then you can get ahead more. So I think that's because people don't understand that culture of exchange. Maybe perhaps that's why some people do charge, but it's not really in the culture to charge to set up your Boveda so and I, I don't think it's appropriate to make fun of people who um, don't know how to set up their Boveda if they aren't don't listen or don't think that they need to be taught that's one thing but um, we can't blame them if they haven't been taught um, and are willing to learn so that's why I yes um, I do teach how to set up a Boveda because it's in Spiritist doctrine that by healing our ancestral line, then that will cure a lot of problems with society and with the way that humans are going for a better future um, and to fulfill our missions. So that's why I te teach it. And some people can make fun that I teach it, but. It's not so sim as simple as um, a lot of people don't know where their um, ancestors are buried or they don't live near them. So you can go to any body of water like the river and then give them flowers there, for example. Um, but that's also why we have the Boveda because a cup of water is like another like a body, body of water for the ancestor um, altar. Um, and because a lot of people are solitary in the neo-pagan world, that's why they have, they buy books and that's why they go to classes is because they don't have someone to teach them. So, and the thing about getting guidance is it's supposed to be a reciprocal relationship. And so, um, someone's not going to invest a lot of time teaching you if you aren't don't invest yourself and become their godchild, for example, or if you don't in some way, you know, ex give that exchange exchange back, because it's just not worth it for the most part. But that's also why I uh, think it's necessary to teach both the Boveda, because some people say that spiritism is becoming a fad. It's the next new thing. Um, for me, it's not. I have my choices of traditions to go in, to go into because of the spirits have had agreed to it, um, but it fulfills my life path better and it's where my home, I feel, is at. So I'm glad that I made that decision to go into Sanse with Spiritismo. And because of stories of things that have happened to me since I was a child, it's a good fit for me and for my protections and stuff. So that's why I did it. Now, do you need guidance to set up your ancestor altar or Boveda? Yes and no, because, um, in Haitian voodoo, they don't really um, ask their ancestors for things or do as much with them other than let them rest and just give them a place of honor um, because then it's the ancestors um, might feel like they have a say into your life and can start, um, they believe it's best for you but cause you problems in your life as they see fit. And also there's just general taboo against the dead because they can cause you problems. They're not just suddenly uh, better people just because they died. It's a process and we can help them with that process. But in the beginning, you might have ancestral problems, etc., and that will require more work. And that is not something that um, a spiritista will work on for free um, outside of the European spiritualist church because and they also don't have like really have a system of uh, it's not emphasis for the, for those spiritualists to um, have an ancestor altar or anything because when we work with um, 
spirits who want to cause problems, then it's not without, you know, some degree of risk for ourselves. And I don't think people um, appreciate that, that, you know, when they see you as someone that can fix a lot of problems, um, there's always going to be someone else bigger and better than you, for example. Um, and plus it's, it's work, work is work. So with that being said, you know what to expect in setting it up. There is ways that you can set it up with minimal risk and that's what I detail on my blog. Now, and people do have problems following instructions, but as long as you follow those instructions, it should be fairly um, safe and you might still want to ask for guidance on that. Now, just because you have a white table, that doesn't make you uh, an espiritista because an espiritista holds we hold masses for the dead, which is basically like folk seances, and you have to know how to do exorcisms, and that's not something that you are going to be able to learn online, and that is not something um, that a responsible spiritist is going to teach you um, without you having the needed protections, because we crown the dead in our in our tradition. But I do detail how to um, stop an unwanted possession from happening and to rid yourself of those influences just in the in the short term I, again on my blog so um that's why I, I teach it and i think um if we want our traditions to um be unblemished as possible and stop people from doing things with our traditions as much as possible as much as we can then we need to put the information out there so that's why i i do teach um how to set up the uh Alter.